uh, we're going to get started on our hike to our replica village. Uh, why don't you guys go ahead and join me? Our first stop here. I'd like to stop here and uh, talk a little bit about the history of this area. Um, first of all, uh, we are walking through this beautiful oak grove uh, today, and that is one of the main reasons that drew uh, the very first Chumash people to this area. Uh, there was a permanent village uh, on this site, uh, but during the fall and winter seasons, the population uh, of this area would grow tremendously. Uh, Chumash people from the coast and from mountainous regions would come down to this area uh, to collect acorns uh, and they would store those acorns uh, for the rest of the year to have a food supply. Uh, in the early 1900s, a family by the name of Lang uh, did move to this area. Uh, this was post-mission period. Uh, so there were not a lot of Chumash people settled in this area at that time. Most of them were rounded up by uh, Spanish conquistadors and uh, missionaries uh, and removed from their ancestral villages. Uh, so the Lang family moved here uh, in the early 1900s and they raised cattle here for a number of years. In the late 1960s, the Lang family did uh, vacate this area. Uh, they were looking to sell the property but were unable to do so due to environmental protection laws. Uh, which is part of the reason why we do have our museum here today, uh, which is pretty exciting, and I'm glad that I get to share uh, some of this space with you guys. Here we are at our replica game field. Uh, next to every Chumash village, there would be uh, a large area for playing games. Uh, this type of area would be used to play a game called shinny, which is very similar to field hockey. Uh, it's played with a stick, not unlike this one, uh, and a round ball made of stone or wood. Um, and it's played, like I said, very similarly to hockey. Uh, goals would be about 300 yards apart from each other here. Uh, and the games could last as long as three hours. Uh, these games uh, were important, of course, to keep children occupied, but adults would play as well. Uh, it's very commonplace for adults to meet up at each other's villages and challenge one another to games like Shinny. Um, oftentimes these games were wagered on and this helped to really strengthen the bonds uh, in between villages and tribes. So here we are at our replica village. Uh, I want to take you guys inside and uh, show you some of our structures here. And we're going to take a look uh, at some of the construction of these ops. Before we get started, I do want to mention uh, we did have a pretty bad fire come through this area about a year ago, uh, and that did uh, completely destroy our replica village. Uh, as you could probably see behind me, uh, we are under construction. So this is a great opportunity to show you guys some of the interior uh, framing of these ops. Follow me. So 
So as you can see, our ops are uh, laid over with tule. Uh, tule is a native plant to Southern California, grows in ponds and still water. Uh, in recent uh, years, it's been a little tough to find this material uh, due to our drought conditions here in California. Framing uh, for the ops is traditionally made from willow poles. Um, of course, we are a modern museum, so uh, we do use iron framing for ours. And that's probably a little bit more apparent uh, on the unfinished side. So why don't you follow me over there? So as you can see here, the framing of these ops is pretty simple, and it is very similar to the construction of Chumash uh, baskets, especially those uh, twine baskets used for draining and leaching acorns. So here to my right, we have uh, one of our ops, and uh, I want to take you guys on inside, and uh, we'll see how these things are constructed. Ops are the traditional homes of the Chumash tribe. Uh, ops were traditionally constructed using materials like willow poles uh, and tule. We do have one of those here. This is our tule. Uh, you can see hanging down a little bit due to uh, weather damage. Ops could sleep between five and eight people, uh, one of this size. Larger ops uh, could sleep as many as 40. Uh, for instance, the chief of the Chumash tribe would have a much larger op and uh, be a multi-family dwelling. One about this size, uh, between five and eight people uh, could sleep comfortably in one of these. Uh, every op has a fireplace in the center uh, for warmth, not usually for cooking, uh, and a smoke hole in the ceiling uh, to let the smoke out from those fires. So typically ops would be laid out with tule mats on the floor for sleeping, as well as bunk bed type frames uh, that could sleep people on multiple layers. Sometimes partitions made of tule uh, were laid out for privacy. Uh, tule mats were also used uh, as door coverings uh, to keep the dust and wind and animals out in the night. 